Hey Reddit, what's the strangest coincidence you've ever personally experienced? When I was a kid around 13, I played a lot of a video game called Diablo 2. I started a clan with a few people I'd met on the internet and we played every day. At some point we were helping some random person and he asked to join. We thought he was nice enough, so we let him in. As part of this clan, we had a shared account we used to store in-game items for each other. After about a month of playing, this new guy goes in and changes the password, steals the account, and defriends everyone. Completely disappears off the map with all our stuff. Fast forward a year later and my family moves to Texas and it's my first today at school. I'm sitting in algebra class talking to the person in the seat next to me and he mentions he plays Diablo. I said, hey, me too. I ran a clan and everything. I asked his username and it was him. 2,000 miles away from where I first virtually met this guy, he is now sitting next to me in math class. When I told him mine, his face went into total shock and he didn't know how to respond. It was awkward for sure. Ended up telling him I didn't care. I was over it. But let's just say we didn't end up becoming friends. That person has an evil spirit. I don't know how else to describe it. Anyone who would hijack a shared account like that, like, okay, having a shared account, you are kind of asking for it. But the fact that someone would act on it makes them evil. So not becoming friends? Yeah, that's the right call. This person would stab you in the back over and over again. Story 2. In freshman physics, I became friends with the Japanese kid next to me. After a while, he was helping me with my Japanese homework. Did really well after that, by the way. But after that class, we kind of drifted apart. Fast forward two years where I'm an exchange student in Japan over the summer, and I'm doing some sightseeing in Kyoto after the program. I'm crossing the street in Kyoto and I hear my name being called out. I look around and there he is. Thousands of miles apart, we meet again. We got some drinks and good food together. It was a blast. And no, his hometown wasn't Kyoto. He was also doing sightseeing while home for the summer. This is a beautiful, wholesome one. A nice contrast to the last one. I hope the thread has a ton of these. Story 3. When I was 18, I lived in a town a very long ways away from where I ended up moving. I struck up a friendship with this guy from work in that town. We play Halo, watch movies, etc. He was awesome. I ended up moving suddenly due to a family emergency and never got his contact info. I didn't even remember his name a decade later. But I thought of him often, as he was an awesome guy through all the years. Eleven years later, I'm working at my job, carpooling with someone from my training class. One night, he asks if I mind his roommate being in the car, as he was going to take the car after we got off at work and use it for the night. He introduces us. I turn around. In the back seat is the guy from the town, a very long ways away. We reconnected immediately and now live together. He's my best friend for sure and the godfather to my children. Well, how could you not be best friends after that, right? It's like the, the, the fates or whatever have intertwined you two. There is no way you cannot feel some sort of connection with someone after that. That's incredible, OP. Story 4. Went to college. Met a cute girl. Where'd you go to high school? She asks. You've never heard of it, I reply. I grew up in a town of 1,200 people, graduated in a class of about 90. Try me, she says. And that was the beginning of finding out that not only had she heard of it, she had almost attended it, because her family had lived in one of the neighboring towns very briefly when she was growing up. We shared dozens of mutual friends, and had apparently spent our young lives narrowly missing each other. Later, after we started dating, we learned that one of our mutual friends had been trying to set us up for years. She was overwhelmed with laughter when she saw that we were finally together, completely without her involvement. I asked her to marry me. She said yes. We went out to dinner with our parents so they could finally meet. Her folks arrive at the restaurant and see mine. Her mom goes, Oh, hey, my dad's name. So, this is your son, huh? They had been co-workers years ago. Of course. We've been married for 11 years now, got a good thing going, and we intend to keep it. Story 5. In grade 10 English class, the teacher didn't have anything planned for us to do, and it was close to the end of the year, I guess. So she goes into the big cupboard in the corner and pulls out a stack of copies. It's examples of a successful essay written during a final exam. It's so we can learn what a good one looks like and how to build a narrative, etc. The topic of these was, what was the most pivotal moment of your life? There are three examples, ranging in proficiency. We read through the first two, and I volunteer to read the last one aloud. I start reading reading, and I stop. The essay was about me. My big sister had gotten a really good mark six years earlier on her final exam essay, which she wrote about the day I was born. I got pretty emotional about that one. I gotta know, did the teacher know? Was this truly a coincidence? Because there had to be something that that teacher knew about that, because they've read this essay before, I assume. And they know who wrote it, I also assume, so maybe it wasn't a coincidence. Definitely a coincidence that OP volunteered to read it, though. Story 6. Told this story elsewhere, but I'm making you all read it again. Was at a convention. There were only a few people in the room. My friend and I wanted an autograph from a voice actor. He started singing in his character voice. There were two random guys next to me. 
One pulled out a video camera to record it. Years later, my husband and I are talking with friends and the convention comes up. The guy with the video camera was my husband. I also took a picture later that day of the crowds and he's in that picture. I stood next to my husband years before I met him. I knew what was coming and I still couldn't believe it when I got there. Sure, it kind of makes sense because if you're at the same convention, then you're more likely to have the same sort of interests and the same sort of... I, I don't know. But that's still insane to me. I always love stories of like, look, we met each other and we didn't even know it. Story 7. One night in university, I was fooling around with my then-girlfriend and noticed that the brightness of the TV caused us to cast distinct shadows on the wall behind us. Being 19 and a fool, I took this opportunity to take a picture using Snapchat of the shadow which my at-attention soldier made on the wall, and then I sent the pic to my best friend. I thought it would elicit an interesting reaction, but I could never have prepared for what was next. You see, on Snapchat, you can see when someone receives your message as well as when it's opened. So as my message is sending, still unopened by him, I receive a snap from my best friend. I open it and lo and behold, what do I see? A shadow dong picture. This man decided at the exact same time that I did to send an identical picture of his dong's shadow on the wall. Both of our girlfriends were confused, thinking it was some kind of inside joke. In reality, we had never spoken of or sent shadow dongs ever before. Look, I'm no expert in rom-coms or whatever, but I think you have to kiss now or something. I don't make the rules, OP, sorry. Story 8. When I was one year old, we moved to a city some 500 kilometers away from where I was born. Fifteen years later, my father decided to put me in a boarding school in the area of that first city because he went there too. I got randomly put in a room with two other guys, one of which is still my best friend today. When I first visited that friend at his home, I discovered he not only lives in the same city as we did, not much of a coincidence as it's the only major city in that area, but in the same frickin' house. Of course, I couldn't remember our old house, so I called my father to confirm it's the same address, and it turns out that he very briefly knew my friend's family from selling the house. Story 9. Nobody believes me when I tell this story, but one day my husband and I ran into the same couple at three different places in two different states. So my husband and I had an errand to run out of state. We leave early and stop to get breakfast. The couple was sitting across from us. The lady had on a funky shirt, which was why she stuck out in my mind. After breakfast, we drive the next state over to the office we have an appointment at. We are waiting in the lobby and the couple from breakfast walks in. Weird. So we spend the day finishing up our errands and then drive back home. I didn't feel like cooking, so we stopped to get some dinner at the pub. We sit down at the table and guess who's already eating at the table behind us? It's the same frickin' couple. I was so ready by the third one to be like, they're following you, OP, but then you said they got there first. So yeah, that's insanity. It's also funny to think that maybe you're the only one who noticed. Like, the other couple did not. Story 10. I wanted my husband to accompany me down to the parking garage in our building to grab something from our car. He was already in his PJ pants and didn't want to come. I convinced him no one would see us and he reluctantly agreed. We got on the elevator and rode down one floor before it stopped to let someone on. The largest, buffest man steps into the elevator wearing his own PJ pants. He said nothing but gave my husband the dude head nod before getting off at the main floor and disappearing forever. We've never seen him since. Story 11. Back in the early slash mid 90s, the phone system changed, and you no longer needed to dial the area code for a long distance in-state call. We are a small state with only one area code. One morning I woke up to the phone ringing, and when I picked up, I recognized the voice on the other end as belonging to my old boss from a few years ago. She had an unmistakable voice. We had a nice conversation for a bit before she realized she had dialed the wrong number. I lived in a different town in a different part of the state, but the number must have been off by only one digit from the one she tried to call. To add to the coincidence, I had overslept. I would have been late for work if she hadn't called me and woken me up. I think that last part is made even better by the fact it was an old boss. So like, they're not your boss anymore, but they still want you to get to work on time, whether they know it or not. Story 12. Worked a half day. Drove six hours from Southern California to Northern California for car camping with my wife. Chose obscure campground which was neatly deserted, off season. Picked the most deserted and remote campsite location. We planned on rocking the tent. We're bummed after setting camp and another couple selects the site right next to us. Turns out it was a coworker I'd spoken with earlier that day. Story 13. My favorites occurred during separate canoe trips. The first was during a Labor Day weekend trip up and down the St. Croix River. Two days paddling upstream, one down. 
It runs between Wisconsin and Minnesota and eventually joins the Mississippi River. Despite it being a holiday weekend, there was virtually no traffic on the river, as we saw only one other boat and that was on the first day shortly after we left. On the second day out, the weather was quite warm. At one point I said, boy, a watermelon sure would be good right about now. My three companions told me to shut up and not even mention it because we didn't have one, and we weren't going to find one in the wilderness. A little while later, we spotted a green object floating toward us, and it turned out to be a watermelon. Years later, I was on a river outing with several other people on the Whitewater River in Indiana. I was paddling my kayak and had just told the watermelon story to the people in the canoe next to me. It was a hot summer day, and someone said something to the effect of, Watermelons are fine, but I could really go for a cold beer right now. A few minutes later, we paddled around a bend and saw a cooler sitting on a sandbar. We stopped on the sandbar, opened the cooler, and found that it contained just enough cold beers for each of us to have one. Appalachian Trail hikers refer to occurrences like this as trail magic. I guess it happens on rivers too. Story 14. When I was 18, I dated a girl who went to a private school. She told me they were having a dance, so I thought, okay, great, it'll be a nice night. She told me that only boys from a specific boys' private school were allowed to come, because of an incident once when they let everyone in. Some girl got really drunk and puked on the headmaster's shoes. So they limited it to one boys' school after that. Fast forward 12 years and I'm with my fiancé, different girl, at a wedding shower. I overhear my wife talking. I was so embarrassed when I puked on the headmaster's shoes. I yelled, That was you? That's awesome. I love you even more now that you're famous. Story 15. Last summer I went to New York with my family for a week. A friend of mine that I hadn't seen since she graduated college was living and working in New York at the time, so we decided to meet up for drinks. As we were walking through Times Square at 11pm on a Saturday, who did we see on the other side of the street but another friend of ours from college? I knew he'd been living in New Jersey, but he was in New York for a grinder date. The three of us went to a bar and talked about life and how none of our friends live in Ireland anymore, they've all moved abroad. It was bittersweet and a crazy coincidence that three small friends from a university in Dublin would serendipitously meet in New York City. This straight up reads like an ad from the, I don't know, New York City travel agency? Look, it just sounds like they're trying to get me to go to New York City, but I won't do it. You can't fool me. I probably will eventually, but not right now. Story 16. Knew a girl in high school that was just the worst type of person. It'll take too long to explain all the reasons, but a big one is that she tried to drive a wedge between my bestie and I. She moved away after high school. My friend and I would bring her up occasionally and talk about some of her worst qualities and say we're so glad we never have to see her again. One time, as we were doing so in a restaurant, suddenly she appeared right next to our table. She had come back to visit someone, and it just happened to be right where we were, right as we were discussing her. So awkward. It was five minutes of awkward and then she left and we just sat there like, what the hell? Story 17. My old work ran a secret Santa once the week before Christmas. It was a $10 limit and the person I was buying for I didn't know very well. I left my buying to the last minute because I just didn't know what to get her. So I was in town walking past some shops and lo and behold, I see an old copy of Oliver Twist in the window of the secondhand bookstore. It just called to me, so I went in and picked it up. I checked the first page for the cost and hey, guess what? $10. Perfect. So come the day of the secret Santa, we're all opening our gifts, some 150 people. Out of the corner of my eye, I see some people crowding around a woman who was crying. I keep listening and people are calling out for the person who is her Santa. I go over and reveal it was me. The lady I had bought that for was crying and hugged me. She said 10 years ago her house burned down along with all of her possessions. The book that I bought her was her favorite, and also the exact same edition, so it had the same cover she remembered. Because it was a second-hand bookstore, it was even weathered in the same places she remembered. So it was as if I'd grabbed the book off her shelf before the fire and delivered it to her, 10 years later. Oh, if this isn't one of the most beautiful, sweetest coincidences I could possibly imagine, I don't know what is. It's so small, yet so touching, and oh, I don't know. This is a really nice one, that's all. Story 18. I had a dream that me and my friend ran into Biggie Smalls. He was alive in the dream world, and he invited us to a party that was on that night. We decided that we were going to buy Biggie a gift, and I suggested we get him a water dragon, a big lizard, because Biggie would look dope rocking a water dragon on his shoulder. We started walking to the party with the lizard, and we were at the local park. I looked down next to a bench, and there was a snaplock bag with white powder. We took the white powder and partied with Biggie that night. The next day, I wake up and go to make a coffee. I turn on the radio and Party and BS is playing. I thought it was a strange coincidence considering I had a dream about Biggie but thought nothing much of it. I walked out and froze. On my porch 
was a water dragon. A water dragon might appear around my house maybe two or three times a year. I spoke to my mate later that day and told him about the dream, and joked, I might find a bag of coke later that day. Sure enough, I'm walking to my mate's house at night and humor the idea. So I walk over to the bench and found a bag of coke exactly where I dreamt it would be. I definitely disposed of the bag though. Me and my friends definitely hypothetically did not snort the coke while playing Biggie Small songs all night into the morning and having the best time of our lives. That would be preposterous. Story 19. When I was in university in Toronto, I was flying to England for a debating tournament. I booked my flight and then told my partner the date and time of the flight so he could book as well. The day before we left, we agreed to meet at a particular subway station and go to the end of the line to catch the bus to the airport. The next day I go to the subway station at the agreed time, but he doesn't show up. Pre-cell phone days, so I can't call him. Eventually, I have to go, so I take the subway slash bus, get to the airport and go to the gate. There is no sign of him. I have him paged over the loudspeaker, no result. I tell this story to the gate agent who looks up the passenger list, and he's not on it. Confused, I fly to London. I did find him the next day in London, which is another story all on its own, almost as coincidental. It turned out that while I was on one level of the subway station waiting to travel north to catch a bus to Terminal 1, he was on the other level of the same station waiting to travel west to catch a bus to Terminal 2, which was at exactly the same time on the same day but a different airline. At every step of the way we had been describing identical routes, but without having any overlap. Story 20. I was about three or four and my grandpa took me for a walk. Suddenly I had this very intense feeling of synchronicity. Without thinking I raised my palm in front of me and in that instant, bird poo landed right on it. The strangest part was I knew this was going to happen. I can't really describe it, but it was strangely the most perfect moment of my life. See, okay, stuff like this I find really cool, because I've had moments like this too. Like, I had this moment in a game, Counter-Strike, where I was kind of holding an angle, like I was sitting in one spot looking at a corner, basically, and I just had this weird feeling, it's like, this dude is going to jump around the corner, and so I aim as if he's going to jump, and not two seconds later, dude flies around the corner, jumping. I felt like I had the power of prophecy, thank you, Apollo. Admittedly, that is a lot less coincidental than OPs, but these moments are just cool, that's all I'm saying. But also, if you knew you were gonna get bird poop on it, why'd you do it? I don't know, something to think about. Anyway, do any of you have some strange coincidences? If you do, throw them in the comments. For now though, thank you so much for watching. I hope you have a wonderful day or night wherever you are, and I will see you in the next one.